Welcome to another episode of Real Talk No Filter. This is Juana. Juana, tell me your story and introduce yourself. Hey, David. First, I want to say thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to be up here. Um, everybody, my name is Juana Council Brown. I am all through social media. Um, I ran into David on Facebook, actually, in a group, so it was awesome. Um, I am... I do a lot within the financial industry and what really brought me to that journey was because I've noticed even with myself, the lack of financial education, I've been to college and I took more like computer stuff, like my associate's degree is in information technology. And when you're taking information technology, you know, they're not going to give you a financial class. They're going to make you take like math and um, stuff that you probably won't use, really. Um, I think I, it was statistics and some English. I even took a Bible class, and I'm still trying to figure out, what am I using that for in the computer industry again? Okay. <laughs> but, you know, I, I guess it's the prerequisite that the school had. I went to Strayer University in um, South Carolina here, and I was like, some of these, like, prerequisites is just weird. So as time went on, and... Um, I started actually in the tax industry a long time, probably over 10 years now while I was going to college. And the thing about it, I worked for like, uh, everybody heard of Jackson Hewitt and Liberty Tax, all these little franchise people heard of them. So, you know, I just started my journey there because I wanted to know why they were charging people so much. I'm sitting out here like, wait a minute. You charge me almost a thousand dollars just to do my taxes? It ain't up on a regular W-2. I'm like, wait, something ain't right. So as time went on, I wanted to learn how to do it by myself. So I started um, working with and, and using the TurboTax software. I was like, okay, I'm working with these different tax industries. TurboTax is a little cheaper. Jackson Hewitt and H&R Block are like your Chick-fil-A of the franchise because, you know, they do try, but they do good. Um, but working in within the office environment, you know, you hear different conversations. And I'm the type of person... You know what I'm saying? I'm, I try to stay humble. And just because a person wants maybe a cash advance or want their taxes done early, that doesn't mean you should judge a person. And when you're in the corporate world, dealing in different offices or, you know, in a corporate tax field, it's like, I feel like people always get judged. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make a better difference. But that just started, that started my journey. But I have other stuff. Like, I was the, the college kid with bad credit, next out credit cards, not understanding nothing. So when I tell you, David, I'm a real person and I understand what people go through, I live the life. <laughs> <laughs> I put a post on Facebook one day. It was like an um, emoji, but it was a picture of Bernie Sanders sitting with his arms crossed in a dealership. Like, oh, you know, with a 580 credit score, we got to wait to see what car we can get, you know? <laughs> so, yes, I live that. So as time went on, I wanted to learn it and educate myself because I'm like, hey, we, we can't just be here on earth just to be working for someone else, making them millions of dollars, and we don't know nothing how they making them news. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to learn how to teach the community. And within the Black community, that's where the financial literacy is not there. And I want to be the voice to say, hey, just because of a color, height, female, male, whatever, I don't care what age you are, all deserve to know what these million what these million dollar earning those the people in congress and the government they're already millionaires why mm -hmm. we can't you know so that's what started everything i, I started with me because i am a real person and yes i have those very low credit scores and i had student debt from the ceiling all the way to the sky so yes and I, I didn't have any power or any control over my financial and i wanted to see how i can learn how to get more um uh, get that more powerful and that more just control, you know, just that more control of my own financial stuff. Yeah. I don't want to go to a dealership and, and I got to sit here and wait for what you're going to give me or what I quote unquote maybe qualify for. I want to go to a dealership and say, look, I, I already know you want a commission. I want that car. This is my credit score. That's what I got. Let's make it work. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty much you want to be, you want to, you want to just really take control of your finance and not be hindered or, or handcuffed to um, what you are somewhat qualified for. That's why I want everybody. So I started my journey about 10 years back within the tax industry. So I learned about how the IRS basically, you know, you work so hard and take all your money for taxes. 
And what 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 kind of what I figured out as time went on, your W four form is the form that the U.S. use. Um, to you got when you first get hired by an employer, you have to fill that form out, give it to your employer, and then that form determines how much money the employer takes out your paycheck for taxes for the IRS. So I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. So we all could be filling this form out incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And then we got to sit here and try to figure out how to get gas money. Oh, no, no. we. So basically it's like this. This is how the IRS works. If you owe them money, they're going to add interest. But if you're giving them all that money, they're not going to, I mean, it's like you're not giving them interest. Like you're not making them pay you interest on what you're giving them. They're holding your money for 12 months out of a year and they don't care. Mm -hmm. I said it in my live yesterday. I was like, and I, I wasn't trying to step on nobody's toes because I want people to work. I want people to be successful. I just want people to research. And if you're going to get a home-based business, I want you to kind of look at, you know, what kind of tax breaks, what kind of deductions, how you can offset that W-2 taxes so you don't be paying the IRS so much. That's mainly what it was about. But some people take things a little, you know, off the chain and I don't mean I'm not is I swear it is no harm to no one it's more of an educational but sometimes I have to literally hit you in your head so you can say oh snap so I have been doing that you know what I'm saying when I use illustrations that's why I even say this is a disclaimer these are only examples this is not real life now if somebody say wait a minute that is my life I don't know it just don't put it on social media <laughs> <laughs> so I, I learned, I wanted to learn how I can make my situation better first. Now we are all, we are our own priority. So we want to make sure we're straight. We want to get the knowledge and we need to research so we can get our situation straight. But well, once you get straight, your next move is your family. You want to make sure that your family is educated, your kids and things like that. So I educated all my kids. My kid, my youngest is 18. My oldest is 23. And I educated them on like, you know, if you're going to go to college, let's look at scholarships, let's look at grants. Let's not all the time get alone because that's what the Department of Education or the government is going to, they're going to give you loans regardless because they know after a certain amount of time, you're going to have about 200 and some thousand dollars worth of loans. And you're going to be like, how are you going to pay all that? And your payments is almost 1000 to 1500 a month. That's like a paycheck. Mm -hmm. So I learned it with me first. Got into, became a life insurance agent in 2016. So I started with taxes, started with insurance. And in 2020, I started with credit repair and learning, um, you know, the size of a W-4 form, just trying to understand more within the financial injury in industry. And now in 2021, I kind of really understand. So now I'm here to educate, but I still learn. I still go to my trainers. So now I got me to the point where I can understand and, and get me to the point where I can move forward. I got the family educated to the point. Now I'm trying to educate the community and then I want to educate more people. You see, I just want to make sure we all have it because it's out there for us to get. And like I've said in my some of my other videos, if the government is using it, why we can't? That's very true. I like the fact that you were, you are going back to the community and reaching out and you want to educate them because I think that's something that's missing. A lot of us, we have a lot of skill sets and a lot of knowledge and we look at first benefiting ourselves, but we don't look back at saying, Hey, let me give back to the community. And right. this is something as, as we should be serving the community um, right. at the, at the end of the day, because if you know that if we serve our community and we give them more benefits, therefore, you know, that right. community goes from here and it, it goes from up here right after and you actually levitate or not levitate, um, you level up the community and therefore everyone around you becomes more successful. So I'm right. in full agreement of what you just mentioned as well. Um, and like you mentioned uh, about focusing on yourself um, internally as well, because I'm right. pretty sure it's not that you can't really get to a certain level unless you clean up what's on the inside. Right, right? exactly. <laughs> so I was going to mention, I'm glad you said that because your inside actually starts with the mind. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so it's like this I was watching a few mo uh, motivational videos and just to sum it up it was actually the, the people were saying get your mind right so if you want to do self talk you know what I'm saying you want to do positive talk because you know how we're human we're going it's a habit we're going to say I can't do it I mean it's just automatic every human kid say I just, I just can't do it 
you know? So instead of saying I can't or I, or I won't, how about ask yourself, now what do I need to do to actually jump on the opportunity or what do I need to do to get myself together first before I can even help someone? So when you ask yourself questions, for one, it becomes more positive, but it makes yourself start thinking outside of the box instead of saying, I just can't. Very true. That is absolutely, absolutely right on that one. And I mentioned on my previous podcast um, that one of my friends, I'll be working out in the gym one day. He's like, oh man, you can't lift that. And I literally looked at him and was like, it's not that I can't. It's that right now, I might not be able to, but I'm, I'm working to there. There you Therefore, go. See? It's like you said, like, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm not there yet. Right. right. And that's where, like you said, you have to move away from that can't and, and, and you won't do this and, and that right. negativity and pump in that positivity, wherever it might be. Because once you start doing that, it builds a goal in your mind and a plan for you to actually reach there and exceed it. Exactly. So I was doing my live yesterday and a young lady asked me, she said, well, you know, I have this situation, but how can I make money? I said, well, first, to even answer, to ask yourself, do you have the desire to move forward to make that money? Mm -hmm. And like I tell people, you don't always have to spend money to make money. You do know you can even start a little savings account with just a dollar. You could go to a bank and start a savings account. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time, most banks say you need five dollars to open it, and then you can put whatever you want as long as you keep that five dollars in there at all times. Okay, well, that's fine. But like I tell people, the way we are made, sometimes when you tell somebody, well, let's start, start saving $30 a month. And I say, well, that's a lot. But if you actually break it down, it's only a dollar a day. So yeah. I try to make things a little simple when I speak because a lot of people, and just the way we are, I'm like that sometimes. If I feel like it's an overwhelming number, then yes, your reaction is going to be, I can't or that's too much. But if you break it down to smaller pieces, then it's like you're tricking your mind. But like, wow, I really can save a dollar a day. Very true. That you're absolutely right <laughs> on that one. And, and I love how you said that. It's just breaking down those bigger goals yeah. to smaller success. And, and, and you're, you're absolutely right on that one. Um, so what got you into finance? Um, because you might have, like, at a younger age said, you know what? Something's not right. Or, or something must have said, hey, I, I, I need to be better than what I am. Or or build a future, therefore I can retire right. earlier, whatever it might be. So what started me in finance, like I said, I started in the tax industry a long time ago. So I probably started in my 20s. And mm -hmm. then in my late 30s, I started in the insurance industry. And the insurance industry is a nice knowledge base to understand. So it kind of kicked it in and around 2016 or 2017. So about four or five years ago, I kept thinking, okay, I want a nice car. I want the money they got. I want to do this. But what am I not doing that they did? You know what I'm saying? Or what am I not understanding? What do I need to do to get to that level um, that they are? And, and another thing I had to teach myself is it doesn't happen overnight. Most people want to be a millionaire yesterday. You're right. We all do. I promise you. I want to be one like yesterday too. I know this. But you got to remember, if they're 50 years old and they're millionaires, they might have started 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I talked to a few millionaires and brokers and uh, enrolled agents and CPA. I was on a, a podcast with a CPA. The guy didn't even know I was studying to be an enrolled agent. And when I told you I've been, I've been doing taxes in the film, he just, we just started talking like, whoa, I, the conversation lasted over 17 minutes. And he said he only wanted a 10-minute conversation. He was like, wow. But that's the thing, though. When you find commonality with someone or you see an understanding, the conversations are going to get better. But what I heard that from everyone is it did not happen overnight. They may not say those words, but what they did say was they stay consistent. And at one time, to be an insurance agent, you have to knock on people's doors. Like you're you're knocking on someone's door because that's like sales. And due to now, we're not trying to be sales and we're trying to be more like educated. So in 2016 and 2017, I noticed a lot of knowledge there and I wanted to know how I can start making my situation a whole lot better than what I was. Because as you get taught growing up, you get taught, go to college, get you a job and a degree and try to make money and just get you a house, get you this car. But what, what we're being taught is to create debt that you have no knowledge on how to hurry up and pay it off. True. Very true. You're absolutely right on that one. And I love that there, I've heard it uh, recently 
that they're switching up the education system to actually start building on how to teach people how to budget, how to teach right. people how to save money, how to teach people um, how to spend money. And that's the biggest thing. We're so, it's great to have a credit card because yes, it builds up credit. And that's right. exactly what you use it for. However, sometimes right. we have to say no when they say, hey, you earned a credit increase and it's $10,000, but you're only making <laughs> $4,000. So those things we have to look towards. And I'm glad right. that our government, uh, both US and Canada is doing that. And they're looking at the education education system to right. actually better us to, to reduce our debt. That's what, I'm glad you said that. So I did some research for the US. There's 50 states in the US there's only 17 states within the U.S. that is teaching a personal finance class. Mm -hmm. So the other states, you know, haven't reached that. But like you said, it's starting to get up there because I feel like young kids may be starting in middle school. Okay, elementary, if you're five years old, you don't care. If you're like eight years old. But if you start getting like 12, 13, and 14 around middle school and high school, I feel like now you need to start showing them, like you said, hey, Let's just take $10 and let's see how we can budget. I mean, we're not just going to give them $100,000, you know what I'm saying? But just start small because remember, they're kids and kids want to spend money. But if you give them a small, like you said, just start them off with a little piece, more likely their curiosity, because kids get curious about everything. They'll be like, oh, wow, so you're telling me if I take $10 and I only spend five or put five up, I could basically build interest? That's interesting. Now, how does that work? So if you start out small and simple, like we said before, you can bring curiosity out of anybody, regardless of age. But I feel like that's a good thing that the governments are now trying to put within the education system, some sort of finance, how to balance a checkbook, or even know how to write one. Even though we don't have checks, but still just the knowledge of a money order, most people don't even know how to fill one out. Very true. Very true. <laughs> You're absolutely on that. I, I, I love this because that's exactly what we need. We need to learn how to, it's finance and it's money. And right. though, yes, uh, the future is showing that it's going away from, like you mentioned, like the, the checkbook. Um, I could see, to be honest with you, you see less people are carrying actual um, notes, like actual right. like dollar amounts in their, in their wallets. Everything's all credit or not credit, just plastic or, or cryptocurrency right. all over the net. Everything's all digital now, right? Um, yeah, right. So the good thing with those digital things are, though, is that with digital, you're able to run reports and get reports and stuff like that. But again, it's that educational piece that, hey, just because it shows right. a balance sheet or it shows your financial statement, if you have no clue what it says and all right. you care about is, hey, I know I have $10,000 in the bank in my savings right, account, right. but you don't know how you're going to be using it over 10 years and you exactly. have medical expenses, you have loans to pay car lo car loans to pay, house to pay, rent, groceries, and stuff like that. It's so $10, right. It's $10, <laughs> right. Your $10,000 is going to go down to like $800 in like two months. And now you're, exactly. now you're, now you're <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's great to know that there's people out there like yourself that is right. willing to do that education system to actually help out um, the community. I remember in our talks prior is that you want to um, talk in front of a million people. And hey, you never know, it might happen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So with that being said, like teaching a million people about finance and, and how to budget, that is fantastic because that's now a million people that didn't know, now know how to do all that stuff. Now know how to, and, and, and it's true, empower every dollar. Right. And that's the biggest thing. You have to make your dollars work for you and not you work for those dollars. I'm glad you said that. So I was talking to a broker. I told you I'm, I'm connected with so many people. It's a few millionaires. So the person said he taught his boys to not use a debit card. I was like, but why? It's, you know, it's it's more easier because you, you can calculate your own money. But he said he, he wants to take the liability off himself and put it on someone else. I said, whoa. So he used all credit cards. He don't use no debit cards. His money sits to the bank and he just transferred it to the credit card paid off. I said, you know what? That makes sense because look at it like this. If you're having a MasterCard or a Capital One credit card, that's their credit card and their money, right? That's not technically yours. It just gave you some kind of revolving loan or, you know, a financial piece to put in your pocket and you can use it and then just pay it back. I said, okay, so look at it like this. If someone steals money off that credit card, 
Capital One or MasterCard is going to investigate real quick, right? Because that's theirs. I was like, light bulb. So you took the liability off of your personal money and put it on MasterCard or credit card or your bank account credit card because they're going to fight for what's theirs. Because remember, if it's your own money, you're going to fight hard to get it back, right? They're going to fight hard to get their money back. Very so true. when he said he found a way to take the liability off himself and put it on someone else, I never thought about a credit card like that. I never did. Because what you said was, if someone gives you an extra line of credit, you got to be careful. But just like the guy said, he said, but if you pay it off, your credit score goes up. I was like, I never thought about it like that. So every time I network and connect with people, I learn something. They may not be going live to teach the lower or the middle class. Now, I'm going to learn it. I'm going to teach you about it. This is what I was taught by people who does these things. These are brokers. They've been doing it for 30 years. He's a millionaire. He's been doing it for 40 years. She's, she's an insurance agent. She's been doing it for 15 years. So they have experience. And within their experience, they made mistakes. So if I learn, you don't have to make all the mistakes because other people already made them. You learn from them. You don't make those mistakes. And now you're becoming an asset to people. I was like, when I heard that, do you know I was seeing, I literally, I, I'm 42. I've never known of a credit card to be a, um, uh, you take the liability and put it on them. And when they explained it, when the guy explained it and broke it down, when he said that he didn't teach his sons, he got three boys. He taught them to never own a debit card. I was like, why? And when he broke it down, I was like, Oh, I need to get credit cards, okay? <laughs> but he wasn't trying to tell people just to go get credit cards. It was a point he was trying to make. The principle is, if you pay it back, you still get a benefit because your credit score go up. They're a company. They don't care about credit scores because they got millions of dollars to put on these credit cards. And like American Express, they have the money on these credit cards. They load it and they provide you with the card. If you're taking the liability off your personal money and put it on theirs, common sense is going to be like, people are going to fight for money because it's theirs. I never thought about it like that. Now, that now, what do you actually think about that? <laughs> that is awesome. And I and it's, you're absolutely right on that one. And I somewhat live that way. Um, one thing I've actually learned, um, I was actually, when I went to, flew up to Florida one day, um, mm -hmm. they said, they asked me, hey, um, you want to buy insurance for the when I was renting a car I'm like yeah yeah and then someone said don't do that I'm just like why it's like you're paying on credit I'm just like yeah and like you have car insurance already I'm like yeah it's just like you got insurance you look, on your credit I'm like, card <laughs> yeah so I'm just like if, if you look at all that stuff that you're paying for your credit card and you're paying already on your actual insurance and now you're going to pay for more insurance on a rental card you opt out of it it makes right. no sense to do it <laughs> oh yeah I did hear that because you're right yeah. You know what? I'm glad you said that because I, I, I forgot about that. Credit cards is from a company. They're insured. Your bank accounts are insured, but you do know the government insures everything. So like I was, this is how I was comparing that to insurance. Why don't you protect yourself or your money with insurance? The banks do it. The government does it. Why we can't do it? Very true. Very, very true. <laughs> and it's funny because I like I remember we were talking about TikTok earlier. Um, it's funny. You go to the bank and you ask, and this is the reason why I asked this, I'm saying this. You go to the bank and um, this guy went to the bank. He had over $100,000 in the bank account. He wanted to take that money out. The bank's like saying, hey, guess what? You come back next week because you don't have the money there. Right, they you're don't. just like, wait a second, that's my money. <laughs> Every day you're putting that money in there. You assume that they have a box that says your name on it and that you say, okay, 100000 here's $100,000. Here's your money right. back. But it's funny because um, in going all that, and, and for me, I actually have a finance and accounting background. Um, you give the money, you go and you put uh, money into the bank and you have a 2%, if you're lucky, savings account. Right. But then after <laughs> that, you go and you loan money from the bank they're giving it like 18%. The money, and it's funny how that works because you give the bank money. They're only going to give you 2%, but they're going to loan right. your same money out to somebody out at a higher they're interest. They're giving it more, they, yep. <laughs> Exactly, right? And stuff like that, it makes me wonder about the financial institutes, especially the bank, which is the most richest company out there in a sense. Thanks. And they have all the money in the world, uh, yet 
they they're they're very smart and this is their way of of no they say um the rich get richer in that sense but yet as individuals if we don't know those secrets of the bank or if we right. don't know how to leverage and that's the biggest word is leverage every right. dollar then we're 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 worse off we're we're not making money we're not getting ahead that's right so my upline within the insurance industry she's been a broker for 24 years and i was uh moving my 401k and you know, the banks want you to put that little bit of money in their bank account where you only, yep. like you said, you're only going to get like one to 2%. She moved it to like a, maybe a traditional IRA, but I didn't touch it. So, you know, I won't get taxed on it. Like I tell people when it comes to taxes, if you don't touch the money, like it's in your hand, or since we don't really carry cash, if it doesn't go to your personal bank account, you put it in a savings, some kind of retirement savings account. That's where the, the IRS will start letting you allow you those deductions when you won't be taxed. And a lot of people don't know that, which I understand because we in modern time are just used to spend, 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 spend. But if you know how, like you said, I love that word leverage. If you know how to leverage what these banks, these financial institutions, these credit card companies do, you will literally do the same thing they're doing and you will become a millionaire within a certain amount of time quicker because you have that knowledge and cool you got an accountant background so you know a lot <laughs> i'd like you um i at a very young age um there's two things i always want to do in this world um well learn um which was finance and accounting because i'm like you know what this is the fastest way to get rich <laughs> and the second thing was to go into the medical field to somewhat find a cure for cancer and save everybody to tell you those are the two things so my whole background right. is science and accounting and fi is finance accounting and science so when i was going through uh college i i looked at all this stuff i went through the whole accounting program um first i started with finance and i'm like yes i love finance but i'm like you know what i need to know the accounting side i hate accounting to tell you the truth but yeah. it's, it's important to <laughs> But it's, it's important to know um, those things like the debit, the credits, your liabilities, your assets, uh, to right. understand um, your, your gross profit margin, to understand how to read a financial uh, statement. There you uh, go. Because when you go into accounting, then you start to learn um, taxes. And that's the biggest thing you learn about taxes. And you learn the secrets of taxes and how to uh, deduct your taxes. And you understand the tax right. benefits and stuff like that. Um, with all that being said, um, then I looked at it. I'm just like... I like it, but there's, I finance to me, it's, it's better than accounting. And I don't care what anyone says. It's the fact that with finance, you learn things like mutual funds. You understand right. finance to me, it builds your future. Accounting yep. is a right now situation versus right. finance. It's a, it's a future uh, state of Finance of, of is like an everyday thing. So that's so true. So if you look at it, accounting like taxes, that's a million dollar industry, just like your insurance, which is finance. You can become like a broker. They become they can become a millionaire within a year. If yeah. they get certain people with a certain amount of money, can they get certain commissions off of it? So the, the insurance company I with Primerica, they actually going to pay for me to become a get my securities license. They want me to get my series six sixty three sixty five and twenty six. Yeah, twenty six. So I got the book. I'm starting with the SIE because you got to start with the basics first. And then I'm going to move to 63, then 6, and then 65, and then 26. It's a lot of numbers to remember. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I guess because people keep repeating it to me, I can't remember. And let me tell you, I took an accounting class one time. I made a C out of it and never went back. Because <laughs> for some reason, computers and engineering and robotics was more like, for an 18 and 19 year old at the time, it was more fantastic. Like, oh, you know, accounting was, I was like, really? I got to study and work hard? No. But as I got older and started within the tax industry, so you know exactly what an enrolled agent is because I have the book and I'm studying to be an enrolled agent. My first test is going to be September 17th. Um, it's going to be the individuals. And then the number two is business. And number three is the right to represent. Same thing as ethics. Um, so you got to know the laws. Um, but the way the IRS says, the business is the hardest. So they want you to take the uh, first and third and then take the number two last. Because as you know, with humans, if your confidence is up, more like you like, I'm going I'm to kill it. I'm going to pass that test. So I said, you know what? They gave me an idea. So I'm going to take the first easiest one as the individuals. Just basic, as you probably know, 
10W4, uh, 1040s and schedule C's and all that good stuff. Teach about how you can, who you can claim when you can't, certain uh, res residency, residence tests and things like that. But so, and so that that's amazing because it just, it's like, I can literally talk to you all day about this, really. <laughs> <laughs> Because of finance. So I like I, I like that because even in Canada, US, everywhere, I don't care if you're in the UK, China, you need to have some type of understanding of the currency. Yeah. You have to understand finance no matter where you are, because at the end at the end of the day, at one point in time, you're gonna have money in your hand or in your bank account. And there if you, you think and if you think going to the grocery store and you're gonna pay a hundred bucks for all the name brand stuff that will fill your cart. You're very mis. You're very very misinformed. Very misleading. In sense. <laughs> <laughs> if you so. notice, everything is going up now. Groceries, inflation. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Because uh, they said the tax, um, uh, uh, the gas tax in the U.S. went up like a couple of pennies. Because it used to be like 23, 24 cents now. It's up to like 28, 26, 28. So I'm like, now we gotta pay more taxes. Why is it because y'all can't handle the tax? I mean, y'all are Congress people. You should be able to understand. But the way, like I tell people in the community, the government knows what they're doing. This is why they're raising certain taxes. But I want everyone on this level to know what we're doing so we don't have to sit here and keep being dependent on the government. Very true. And that's, I think that's what hurts us the most. I think that's also what's driving taxes and inflation is the fact there's a lot of people that are dependent on the government to for their everyday needs yeah uh, bec because at the same time they are they have their jobs they get their jobs and they spend their money and now they have no money um right. so now they're like guess what i'm just gonna go on government assistant and that drives it goes up but then you got a lot of people that go on the government system uh, assistant and they don't save money <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the <truth. laughs> And, the, and you know what? You mentioned mutual funds. Mutual funds and, and other certain type of um, investment or retirement brackets like those, you can get a bigger return from the bank because the bank loans you money at almost a 16 to 17% rate. So even though you got a bank account, you want to borrow 100000 you want to get like a 15% interest rate added on. So if they can do that, then why we can't find ways to put our money in so we can get that same return? Like you said, they don't want us to know the secrets. No. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't want to, they don't want us to become millionaires because they be like, oh my God, they know what's going on. Um, in the beginning, I believe that when we're kids up until, let's say, elementary school and even uh, before high school, we have a group of people that we do hang around with to literally go from a day to day and, and, and just friends in a sense. Right. Then you see, you start understanding, okay, this is what I want in life. And then your, your mindset then changes around high school and college slash university, because now you're networking around people that, guess what, have the same mindset as you, that you feel that will get you further in life. Right. But then after that, after you finish all that and you actually go into work and into the workplace, um, I find that now you have a new set of friends. And now you're like, these are my life friends and right. someone like yourself. And, 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 and I, I love the fact that we're connecting this way because that's how I see you now as a life friend, because now right. it's someone I can, I can network with someone that right. can give me knowledge and understanding of the financial world world. I'm out of it now, the financial side, but I still read the financial business and I still understand it because at the end of the day, it's not going away. Right, <laughs> it's right. Absolutely not like, going away. Um, have you ever, uh, I'm, I'm sure you heard of Yahoo Finance. Yeah. Like you could go online. And so some, some people might think it's boring. It can be. But I look at it as it's an opportunity for me to gain something. I can tell people about it. Or if it's an article I can't summarize, I share it out to my social media. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, this even came from Yahoo Finance. This isn't just me talking. You see what I'm saying? Even when like, I put on uh, Facebook, I said there were 63 million people within the U.S. that's living paycheck to paycheck. So the question was, why are y'all still doing this? Like you, So you're telling me there's no more options within the world where you just got to sit home and go to this one job and live paycheck to paycheck and give the IRS all your money? I mean, come on. <laughs> no, but I've been trying to make points. And yesterday, like I said, I don't try to step on people's toes but I'm trying to be realistic with people because that's the problem. People want you to sugarcoat, oh, you're fine. You can, you can just uh, live off a hundred bucks and then you're going to go blow it at the bar or at the hair store. Like, come on. What, why we can't do what we were taught as kids? Because I remember my daddy was military. My daddy used to tell me and my sister, he'll give us allowance. 
He said, why would you blow the whole 10, 15 dollars, whatever? He said, why you just don't take maybe five bucks, put the 10 up? Because back then in the 90s, stuff was not as high as it is now. There was something called penny candy. I could spend a dollar on a hundred things of Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> right. But the thing about it, just that little bit of knowledge, it starts, so it should have clicked. But, you know, when you're kids, you want to buy. But as you start becoming, like you said, going to college, and now it's like, wait a minute, now I got to get in this work world. And wait a minute, I ain't got mom and dad, and there's no more Tootsie Rolls for a dollar? Oh, no. <laughs> you see, I'm just saying, that's why, that's when it's time to level up, pick it up, and start researching. I know there's a lot of scammers out there, and I tell people this, I know this. Everybody, they're scammers, spammers, and everything. But we also need to do our own due diligence and research on these companies. I'll be like, the financial industry, the tax business, and the insurance are not scams. I had so many people say, oh, insurance is a scam. How? Please tell me how. <laughs> because you have to take a state exam. You're not going to look, you're not going to grocery store and pulling out your uh, license out of box of lucky charms. That's a scam. But you're literally taking a test, maybe what, a two and a half hour test. You're sitting in the building, you know, due to a pandemic, you got the little plastic with the mask. But the thing about it, you're sitting and taking a state exam. You're not literally going to, front, to the grocery store and thinking, oh, I can pull it out of Frosted Flake Box. No. <laughs> and the, um, in Texas, this has been around for thousands of years. So how is that a scam? So you're saying the IRS is scam? They might be. You need to handle that with them, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't. <laughs> I love this. Um, any final thoughts on your side? Basically, I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad to connect with you, baby. It was amazing. I learned something about you. I didn't know you was an accountant. Like I said, I took one class and it was over for me. I, I, I switched <laughs> the major, man. I switched my major. <laughs> But I did get my insurance license. I got into the insurance industry um, and the financial industry because I wanted to educate people, like I said before. I just want everyone to stop thinking everything is a scam. There are scams. Don't get me wrong. I know. But every single thing, when you're dealing with finances or insurance or accounting or taxes, it is not all scams. Now, there are some that can copy the IRS. Yes. But... Everybody should know the IRS is not going to call you, email you, or text you. They're going to have a letter in your mailbox, certified or not. So that's why I say be careful and do your due diligence and research. And again, if everybody want, have any questions, want to message me, I am on Instagram and, want, on, and Facebook at wanna.council. I am on LinkedIn and Twitter at Wanna Brown. And my YouTube channel is jcouncil1996. I will definitely put that in the bottom description. Uh, okay. Therefore easier for everyone to remember. Well, Juana, this has been fantastic. We'll definitely talk right after this. This is Real Talk. Okay. Take care.